That's it. Come on, let's give that to the Lord God Almighty. Isn't he awesome? Can we just take a few minutes and just give him glory and praise his holy name today? We thank him for his goodness and we thank him for his mercy. We thank him for watching over us last night, building us up. We glorify and praise you today, God. Hallelujah, we love you today, Jesus. There is none like you, almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He's so worthy. He's so worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise. Amen. Amen. I'm going to try to act like I'm, I'm, I'm at home if it's okay with you. And if I do that, Sister Vesta may not always say that you might preach good if you act like you're at home. So I'm going to act like I'm at home and uh, thank Pastor for allowing me to be here. It's Sunday school. It's Christian education. So I'm going to teach you a little bit. I'm a Bible reader. I love the word of God, but God's going to give us what we need to help us today. I'm so uh, thankful, Pastor, for you having me, you and the First Lady. I really enjoyed you guys. I can't wait to get you guys in Alexandria. I'll tell, tell, tell you all a little bit more about that. But let's just dive into the word. We only have a few minutes. Are you, are you ready for that? Will you get your Bibles and go to St. John chapter 20, verse 19 through 22? St. John chapter 20, verse 19 through 22. I am mindful of your consecration. And after every consecration, great things happen. God taps you into the prophetic and the spiritual realm. There's something today, this morning, that, uh, that God placed in me that he's going to put in you. So keep your mind clear, have your spirit ready, because this is going to bless you. Are you ready? Let's read it with me. And the same day at evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And... When he had so said, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again. He said, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And then he said, then the Bible says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I want to teach you this morning on this subject, why worry? Why, why worry? Now you're probably wondering, what in the world is this man talking about this morning? If there's one thing, listen to me, that we have to get out of the church so that the prophetic can operate, so that your prayers can come to fruition, so that God can use you to move mountains, we need to get rid of worry. And I'm going to help you today. I'm going to help you today. You, there's some of you have been worrying about your children. There's some of you probably been worried about your finances. There's some of you probably been worried about your ministry. There's some of you probably been worried about this and worried about that. But today, when Pastor Russell gets finished with you and the Holy Ghost speaks to you, you will not be worrying anymore about anything. Do you believe that? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you believe that. Father, we love you. We thank and praise you. I come on bending knees asking for your glory. Speak today to these people, God. Remove that spirit of worrying out of us, oh Lord. We trust you and love you today. Bless these great people, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Why worry? Worry. If there's one thing that I'm familiar with, if there's one thing that I'm sure of, it is Satan would love to leave the spirit of worrying in the church all over the people that God that God loves. Here you would find in this passage of scripture that God's people, these disciples who have roamed with him throughout the regions, who walked with him and saw the power of God, the move of God. They saw the miracles of God, the healings. I can go on and on and on. They've seen him tackle some of the toughest things and casting out demons from with the, the legions and feeding the multitude. They walk with him. They saw people coming back uh, from the dead. I, I mean, I mean, Lazarus, just so many things. And throughout all that stuff that they saw, you would think that all the people, uh, you, uh, you would think that, the, that these disciples would be the last someone to have a spirit of worrying and anxiety and fear and so forth and so on on them because they were that close to Jesus he dies he, he prophesies and he dies and and now they're trapped here in this room full of fear the Bible said they had fear of the Jews wherever there's fear there's worry and anxiety uh, uh, you can't function right things are not the same you can't move forward and do the things that God has called you to do so what does Jesus do he pops up in the midst of them and he said peace out of him 
peace, something about the peace of God that removes anxiety, that removes worry. That removes, he knew it. He knew it. The moment he walked in, he said, peace be unto you and then he had to give them some assurance he said look at my hands look at my side and, and he wanted to let them know that it is me and I'm back like I told you I would he's trying to rid the worry in he's trying to get rid of the fear so that they can operate the way he had called them to operate then he says it to him again peace be unto you and as my father has sent me even so I sent you I can't send you or send you any place in anywhere when you got a worrying spirit on you when you got this anxiety when you're sitting there trembling, worrying about what the Jews are going to do to you, worrying about will they take your life, worrying about uh, this and that. He said, you can't so peace. He pushed peace on him and breathed on them the Holy Spirit so that he can remove all of that. You know what troubles me is how quickly they forgot about what he said when he was with them. This is what he said to them. And you would think they would have remembered this. In St. John chapter 16, verse 32, he says this, Behold, the hour cometh and, 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 and is now cometh that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone. He prophesied to them, to them before this actually happened that they would scatter and that they would leave him. And he said, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. He said, these things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have, there it is, peace. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He told them this before they were found in a room hiding from the Jews. He said, listen, and here's what I want to magnify to you out of what he had prophesied to them about. He said, listen, he said, in the world you shall have tribulation. But he tells them, I have overcome the world. So you, the church, don't have to worry about the troubles or the tribulation that's going to befall the world. Now let me define this word tribulation so you can understand what I'm trying to tell you here. I'm going to go deep into the scriptures with you of what he prophesied to his disciples about because he knew that one spirit would come and that spirit of worrying would come upon the church and it would shut us down and it would cause us from doing the things that God has caused us to do. The word worry, the, the, the word tribulation is defined as this. It's a cause of great trouble or suffering. You don't have the definition do you? It is a cause of great uh, trouble a suffering that's tribulation i got worrying and anxiety attached to it when he said that there's great tribulation coming into the world he was telling them that there was trouble and there was suffering that was going to come up uh, there was going to be times where people are going to be worrying about things like now uh the shutdown of the government you got people that are worrying they, they have no idea what's getting ready to happen because they don't know if this thing's going to end or keep going but this is just a little taste of what is to come but he tells them he said be of good cheer for I this is for you the church I've overcome the world no matter what the world goes through don't you worry listen let the world worry don't you worry not the church not the church of the living God we shouldn't worry about anything that's what he prophesied to them about and that now the time had come and now the time is now that if there's anyone that should be uplifting anybody if there's anyone that should be speaking those things that are not as though they are if there's anyone that ought to pull things that are not here bring it into existence it should be you and I who have the power of God the presence of God and that God had prophesied and say don't worry I wish I had a few people that would help me this morning look at somebody and say stop worrying don't worry. You just came through consecration time, man. You got some anointing on you. You got the power of God on you. It's time now to face some of these issues and situations and watch how God move on your behalf. He prophesied that to them. Now, let me go a little deeper with you. Let me go just a little deeper. Let me define the word worry. Do you have that definition for me? When you define the word worry, it's defined as this. A state of anxiety and uncertainty over actual or potential problems. It's anxiety over something that has not happened yet, you're worrying about, or something that's going on now, potential problems. Now, it's interesting, now, right? Now, I, I can see you worrying a little bit about stuff that you see, but what Satan is move at is he having you worried about stuff that you haven't even seen yet, that you don't even know, that you don't even know is going to happen. You're worried about stuff that you can't even do. I mean, come on. But either a bad, because if it's something that I have not seen, that actually have not happened, I don't have to worry about it. And if it's something that's happening, watch this, I still don't have to worry about it. Why? Because I got the power of Christ inside of me that can change things that are happening. I believe.
believe that. I believe it. I believe it. Just as sure as I'm sitting here looking at you. I believe every word of it. Now, let me give you a good example. I gave you the definition. But let me give you a biblical example of, uh, uh, um, of uh, what worrying looked like. Are you ready? I just want to pull this out. Are you familiar with Daniel in the Old Testament? How uh, the king loved him and, man, the king really didn't want him to go into the, the, to the uh, lion's den and, and it, it really troubled the king when, when, when they found out that Daniel did not obey the, the, the command of the king. But, but the Bible said that, that, that they got him and they threw him into the lion's den and it was something that something took a uh, hold to this, this, this king. And he had what I'm trying to tell you today, a worrying spirit that came upon him. But I'm going to take you into his life and I want to show you what a worrying spirit looks like. And then you see if, if, if that's in your world. Are you ready? In, in, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 18, I'm just going to go straight to the story. Verse 18 through 22. It reads, then the king went to his palace. This is after Daniel is in the lion's den. I can't imagine what he's feeling. He's probably thinking Daniel is over with. The moment he get in there, the lions will eat him. It is over. So he goes back to his palace. And the Bible said he passed the night fasting translation he could not eat food worrying takes your appetite watch this neither were there instruments of music brought before him worrying takes away the joy the pleasures of things of music that you have to lift up your spirit that to cause you to give glory and praise to god in other words when they take the music away that individual is now living in what we call the blues are you familiar with what I'm talking about? She got the blues or he got the blues. Something is troubling him. Anxiety, worry has come upon him. Why? Because when I play his favorite music, he don't laugh. When I play her favorite song, she has nothing to give. Something is troubling you. Something is worrying you. That's what blows my mind when we come into the house of God and worship and praise go forth. And you don't get up and give God glory. He say, enter in my courts with thanksgiving and enter my... We of all people. But when they don't give it, that's because they're worrying about something. When we come into this place, when the music begins to shout, when the music begins to play, we should be up shouting and praising and glorifying God. And it's contagious. When people who are worrying see you're not worrying, then it just moves all through the house and the glory of God can come in here. And we can move mountains together when we take away the spirit of worry. Get out of here. So here he is. He goes there. Watch this. He can't eat. He loses his appetite. The music is gone. And then look what happens after that. The music that was brought before him was gone. And then his sleep went from him. I'm giving you three things that Satan don't want you to see. That will happen to you when you worry. You stop eating. It affects your appetite. The joy of the music that brings pleasure, that makes you laugh and smile, which helps you laughter is medicine for the soul. It affects that. And then here, it deprives you of sleep. When a person is not sleeping and resting, how can he think and function? So you can see the spirit upon him as he worried about Daniel. Worrying about something he could not fix. Watch this. Worrying about someone who had the spirit of innocence in him, who God had wrapped up. That when he came the next morning, he runs to the cave, crying with a loud voice. Daniel, Daniel, the king that thou served. How did he do you, Daniel? Daniel said, oh king, oh king. Can you imagine how he felt when he heard his voice? How the worrying spirit went away. Joy came upon him. Peace came upon him. Belief came upon him. Because Daniel was taken care of. Daniel wasn't worried. Why should you? It's powerful. So when you look at what worry do to you, I've just given you a couple of things that worry do to you. Uh, uh, well, you know, what you saw with the king. But some folks, worry make you pull your hair out. Worry make you bite your nails. Worry make you sit there, start tapping and, and just shaking your legs. It irritates me when somebody's just doing that. Just come on, shut, shut it down. What's up? Is it just me? The first thing I say is, what are you worrying about? Somebody sitting there looking at you, talking to you, and they just looking clean past you. You sit there holding the conversation, then they snap back and say, what? What, 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 what did you say? I, I've been talking to you for 10 minutes. What are you worrying about? Something is troubling you. Watch this. Worry people miss a lot of things.
What are you trying to do to us today, Pastor Russell? I'm trying to pluck up and root out the worrying in you so that you can be who God called you. You'll be surprised of the young kids, that, that, that worry now, that anxiety is on our young kids due to the social media and so forth and so on because they're watching things that people are saying about them and what they're posting and so forth is causing anxiety and trouble and worry. They can't sleep. And young kids are committing suicide. Our young women from the age of 13, 14, 15 years old are depressed. What are they worried about? Go to school. Get an education. What are you worried about? You can see how the enemy slithered his way in through social media to produce that spirit of anxiety, of worrying, so that they can get up on the church. Why? So when people come to the doors that need God, it, uh, uh, you're functioning in the spirit of God and the power of God the way you're supposed to. It won't work and it won't get on them. Let me make you worry. And it'll shut down the power of God in you. It's interesting. I had that experience myself many times before I got to the level of where I'm at right now, that whatever the Lord would allow to happen to me, Lord, let it happen. Let thy will be done, not my will. That's how I feel. Well, under and I, we were, we, I think we were young in the church, and I was working for Diamond B Construction, and, and man, I'll never forget, man, I, oh, man, we had these bill collectors calling us, and, and man, when they called back then, they were mean and tough and was threatening you and telling you you're going to jail and all that. My wife was horrified. She was afraid, and I'm out here somewhere down in Baton Rouge working, and I think I was on 12 working. We were doing some land through some highway out here. And, and she called me and she was crying. And she was upset. She said, John, these people are trouble. They're calling and threatening and saying this. And we owe this a thousand and something. We didn't have the money then. I was working at Diamond B Construction, making $6.50 an hour. Just got out of a homeless shelter. I took on this family. I had all the weight on my shoulder. I'm trying to live for Jesus. And I had my old debts I had to pay. And all of this stuff was coming. And she was worrying. And she called and said, baby, we, we, I said, let's just join hands and let's pray. We join hand and we begin to pray. I said, you calm down. I said, let's just pray and ask God to help us. And he said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, that he'll be with us if we would call on him. Come on, we got things that are at our disposal that we can use to rid out the worrying so that we can have some peace and function in life. We got those things that God has given us. Lean on them, rest them. He said, well, there are two gathered in my name. Hey! And you ask anything. Why worry when you got that kind of promise? Why worry when you're in a covenant with God, the covenant that we have? Why should we worry about anything? Let me ask you a question. Is there anything too hard for God? Not a thing. So here I am. I said, baby, we're not going to worry. We're going to trust God. He said he's going to help us. We've been faithful. We pay our tithes. We're going to do what we're supposed to do and sit back and watch the salvation of God. I got home. When I got home, we were quiet. She was quiet. All of a sudden, I got a phone call. Guess who it was? Murray Ewan. I wasn't even a preacher back then. Murray Ewan called me. He said, John Ross. I said, yes, sir. He said, I want you to come and speak at my church. I said, what? I forgot about the debt. I forgot about I'm, what? Come do who? I don't know if you ever seen Eastwood Pentecostal Church over there in, in, in Lake Charles. You want me to come do what? I just left out of the grace. How did you hear about me? Word had gotten around that I've been testifying and, and my story. So, Mary said, I want you to come to me. He said, I want you to preach three nights. I say, what? <laughs> I go down there. At that time, I was going out speaking and speaking in little places, but I wasn't charging anybody. I couldn't take a penny from the house of God. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. And we finally scraped up some money. We went down there. Lord, I don't have time to preach all this. We finally uh, scraped up some money, went down to the Merle Ewan's church, and, uh, and, and I preached for three days, and Merle called me in his office, and he said, Sonny, he said, sit down there. He said, boy, oh, God, boy, oh, God, God is with you. <laughs> he leaned back in his chair, and, and uh, he gave me a check. I said, oh, no, Merle Ewan. I said, I can't take it. I said, I, couldn't, I can't take that. He said, now, listen, young man. He said, how would you, why would you deprive my church of blessings? We want to bless the man of God. And he, he convinced me to, 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 to start taking money from the church. Workmen uh, was worthy of his hire. He used scriptures and stuff like that. But I still couldn't take it, so I took it and gave it to my wife. And while we were driving down the road, she knew the amount just yesterday, the day before, of what the people said that we owed them. She opened up the check, and it was just the right amount, and then some for us to stop and get a Big Mac from McDonald's. My God is good, not some of the time, but all the time. I look at you today and ask you a question, why are you worried? Look at somebody and say, stop worrying, stop worrying, stop worrying. 
He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He did. I mean, listen, I can tell you stories after stories after stories like that. So once he proved it to me one time, mother, I said, oh, baby. I said, you remember? I always revert back to the testimony. Remember what he did to Merle Ewan? Remember when we needed this and he did it? Remember when? Well, just like he did it then, he'll do it now. The Bible said he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. I believe that. Do you believe that? I receive that. Do you receive it? That's the kind of God we serve. So why? So why? Why worry? Let me take you a little deeper into the scriptures. If this ain't enough to get you, then maybe what Jesus say will help you out. He says this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Go there, please. He says this. He says, therefore I say unto you, and his first words were, take no thought for your life. Translation, why are you worried? Don't you worry about your life. Now, I can get deep with you on this because your life consists of a lot of things. Your 401k. Your house mortgage, your car, your, your, your life, your job, your children, your, your life. He said, take no thought for your life. I, I love it. He said, oh, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. He said, he said, nor yet for your body. He said, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. He said, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. He said, Are ye not much better than they? Now, these are not my words. These are Jesus. He talks about the fowls of the air. He said, They don't plant seeds like some of us do. We go out and plant things. He said, They don't harvest. When you plant it, you go and reap the harvest. When you go to work, you reap the harvest. And he said, And neither do they what? do they gather into barns they, they, but yet God takes care of them he's trying to show you and then he says look at them he said they don't do what you do and are you not more better than them my creation are you not more better than them he said why would you not think that I wouldn't take care of you that's the trick that Satan has played on the church he somehow got you believing that God won't take care of you that God won't do what he said he will and that's a lie straight from the pits of hell he said, aren't you more, more than them, better than that? I, I, you know what I think what the problem is, Pastor? I don't think they know how precious they are. We use that scripture, thou raw a priesthood, a chosen generation, and so forth and so on. You're deeper than that. That is part of you, but you're deeper than that. You're so precious. Man, you're so precious that God told Moses, he, listen, don't you start messing with my people. They're precious to me. You stay in your line, Moses. You stay in your lane, Moses. He said, I know they got problems. He said, I know they're a little thrown off. I know the elevator don't go up all the way and fruit fry shall have a happy meal, but they're mine. He said, don't mess with them. Don't, don't you cut. He said, I can get on them, but don't you get on them. And then he tells them, he said, now go out there and take the staff and feed them and give them what they want. Oh, I wish I had somebody shout with me right now. They were complaining and worried about water and food, and God provided it, although they talked about Moses cause that man to miss the promised land because he was messing with God's people. I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you who you are. The devil know who you are. I need you to know who you are. Do you know how bad you are? I tell everybody, the worst person to mess with is the Holy Ghost baptized in Jesus' name, filled saint, called by his name. You are lethal. You're lethal. You're dangerous. You what we call off the chain. When you walk in the room, things move and you don't even know it. In the supernatural realm, when you walk in the room, things just move out the way and you don't even know it. It yields to you. It yields to the glory and the power of God that's in you. Do you know that? So if you got a revelation of all of this, stop worrying. I had to tell my wife all the time, I said, babe, I got to be careful what I ask for because I know it's coming. That's power. That's power. We had a little granddaughter. She was a, 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 a preemie. And uh, oh, I see my wife. And they told her, the doctors told her what the baby probably would look like. And they told her, don't go look at the internet. And they had her worrying. So I said, baby, please don't. I said, don't. 
I started praying. I went on a seven-day fast. And I just began to pray that, you know, they didn't think the baby would come through and make it and so forth and so on. They show you these big old waterhead babies and all these different looking things and stuff. And, I, and my wife, it just, oh, I've never seen her cry like that in 20 years I've been married to her before. It just hit her. I said, don't do that. I, I began to pray. And I told God, I went before the throne of God like Job did. I said, God, I said, listen. I said, surely that woman is a good woman. I said, surely you've heard my cry. I said, surely you have seen our labor and you know our names. I said, God, there's no way that our first grandbaby is going to be sick. Our first grandbaby is not going to make it. I went on a consecration like you did seven days to get rid of worry, to get rid of doubt, to get rid of fear, and to get rid of what Lucifer, the Bible said that enemy sits at the womb right there trying to destroy everything that comes out. But I knew what he was trying to do. He was trying to weaken the first lady because he put something in her for the women. If there's somebody that you need to cover, it should always be. Good God Almighty, it should always be the first lady. Because see, not only does she need her arms lifted up, but she has to lift up his arms as well. You don't want her worrying about anything. You ladies, listen to me. If there's anything you need to do, you need to take care of everything she needs taken care of so she don't have to worry about it. It ought to be a line at the church coming to you saying, Sister, what do I need to do for you? We don't want you worrying about anything. We need you plugged in. We need you ready. That's what that devil was trying to do to my wife. She come back. She began to lay hands at people at the altar. One man said that when, he, when she laid hands on, he felt fire go down on his body. He was trying to take out the first lady. You mess with the mind of the first lady, you can mess with the mind of the pastor. Because the two are one. Oh Lord, I won't have a friend in the world when I get through preaching here today. I see what kind of day this is going to be. Oh, help me. I don't know if I got time to tell y'all all this stuff. Good God Almighty, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, go to verse 27. It says, which of you by taking thought, that's worrying, can add one cubit unto his statue? In other words, you can't add nothing to your life by worrying. Now, if I got the revelation of this by Jesus Christ, in other words, I can't do nothing about it. I mean, let it be what it is, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to let worry and mess me up. No, I can't add not one ounce of life to my life when I do that. I got to stay away from it. He said, and why take ye thought for raiments and consider the lilies of the fields and how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. He said, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God have clothed the grass of the fields, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, he said, shall, look at that word, shall he not much more clothe you. And then he adjusted some, oh, ye of little faith. Worry knocks out your faith. Shall he not take care of your finances? Shall he not take care of your bills? Shall he not heal your body? Shall he not answer your prayers? Yes, he will. I wish I had some help here today. I wish I had just a little help here today. I wish I had somebody whose faith is increasing right now. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about anything. Then he says it again in 31. He says, put it up there. He says, take, therefore, what he says? Therefore, take no, don't worry. Don't worry. Saying what we should eat and what we should drink and wherewithal we be clothed. He says, for all of these things do the Gentile seek after. He said, your heavenly father know that you have need of all these things. He created you. He made you. He know your tomorrow. He knows your yesterday. He knows what you're getting ready to do in the next hour. He knows exactly what you need. Glory to God. But seek thee first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Then he says it again. Take therefore no. How many times he got to tell him? How many times? Take no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. In other words, let tomorrow worry about. Let me give you this. Let me give you this, because I, how much time do I have, y'all? <laughs> I like that. That's my kind of man. Okay, let me give you a little bit. <coughs> 
<clears throat> let me give you a little bit. Let me, let me help you out. Paul said something in Philippians chapter six, uh, chapter four, verse six through nine. I want you to listen to this. Paul said this because let me tell you what he's, what he's trying to do. He's trying to get rid of the worrying spirit out of these people. He realizes something that Satan has creeped in and Satan has caused him to worry about things. Philippians, he says this here. He said, be careful for nothing. Now that right there is interesting. And then he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now those are some of the most powerful scriptures in the world. Do you have that in the living Bible? Put it up there so they can understand what this man is saying to him. Do you have it up there? What does it say? It says what? You don't have it. Yeah, I got to read it. Do you have it? The living Bible says that you, you don't have it. The living Bible says it this way. Don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. I, I wish they had it. I wish you could see that. That be careful for nothing, it throws people off. But what he's telling them is, is don't worry about nothing. But pray about everything. See, you are powerful when you're on your knees. Prayer moves mountains. Prayer changes things. Prayer fixes things. There it is right there. It says it in the, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all. He's trying to tell them something. Get worry out and get on your knees. Let me tell you how powerful worry is. Worry is so powerful for till it keep Christians off their knees. And when they do fall on their knees, they fall down just like this. Oh, I'm worrying. Lord, and then they up just that quick and they back worrying again. They don't stay there. They don't stay there until they get the answer. Have you ever been in a situation where you were, you were worrying so that you couldn't pray? If it's just me, it was, I know I've been there. Pray. Huh, I'm worrying. What is prayer going to do? It's going to change some things. That's, right. That's what it's going to do. It's going to bring peace. It's going to get you close to the throne of God. He's going to let you know you hear the voice of God saying, Chill out, everything is all right. I said, I'm going to preach like this this morning. I thought I, my wife told me, she said, Now I want you to teach. I want you to be in control today. I want you to teach. But I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. I'm sorry, y'all. It gets in me. I feel like Jeremiah. It just shut up in my bone. When you're talking about the word of God, it consumes me. I can't help it. Oh, God, I can't help it. Oh. She told me. <laughs> but he goes a little further. This, this scripture is so powerful. Go back to the King James Version. It is so powerful that he talks about, don't worry about nothing, pray about everything. But look at what he says here in verse number seven. And then he says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, watch what it shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Now let me educate you on what he's telling you here. Oh my God, he gives us the answer. He tells us what the devil is trying to do. He said, listen, if you don't worry and pray about everything, he said, peace is going to come. Watch this. And when peace comes, guess what peace is going to do? It's going to shield your heart and it's going to shield your mind from anxiety and worrying from entering in and causing you not to operate in the faith that God had called you to operate in. He's educating them on a whole nother level, bro. Let me show it to you this way. Watch this. When worry comes, it aims for two parts of the body, if you don't understand what I'm saying. One part of the body that he aims for is the heart. This is what he's telling the church. He said, guys, do you know that when worry comes, Satan knows what he's doing? He's trying to shut down your heart. He's trying to stop it from operating the way God calls it to. Out of the heart, out of the heart of man. Listen, with faith and all of this stuff, God hears it and brings things to you. You need a pure heart, a clean heart, a right heart, so that God can bless you. But when worry gets there, it contaminates the heart. It locks up the heart. It pollutes the heart. Man, that's, oh God. Listen, listen, listen. Solomon said it like this. Wise man. He said this in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. He said, he said, trust, watch this, in the Lord 
with all thine heart. Now, he's teaching you something. He says, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And then he says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Getting your path directed by God is what we want. But he said, but when you trust in the Lord first with all thine heart, it works. Here's how this worrying stuff works. Worrying pushes trust right out of the heart. And then when trust is gone, watch this, God can't direct your path. So worrying comes in, it pushes your trust from God out, and guess what? Then you direct your path. Oh, thank you, getting the revelation. So there's a reason why worrying targets the heart. Because at first, before you had problems, you trust God. And when you were trusting God, he ordered your footsteps. He directed you. But worry came. Trust left, and now you're roaming and you're wandering all over the place. You're no longer the same anymore. It's interesting. It's very, very, very interesting. Very slick. Very, very cunning. But you need to be aware of it. See, this worry and stuff is bigger than what you think it is. I'm trying to educate you and take you on a whole other level so that you can keep this spirit away from you. Don't let it get in your heart. Don't let it push the trust out. Don't let it cause you to start leading your own direction instead of God leading you in the direction. Listen to what Jesus said in St. John 14, 1. This is a, a, a funeral a scripture that they always use. But look, look at what he said. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believe in God? Believe also in me. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart worry. He said, only trust, just trust in God. He said, you believe you trust in God? He said, believe and trust in me. He said, don't let your heart be troubled. Things of the world will come and trouble you. Let me tell you what Satan used. If you're a family, he uses the children. He uses the husband. He uses the wife. Uh, he, he, he loves, whatever he can do to trouble your heart, whatever he can do to cause you to worry. And that's just one blow he's coming with. He's coming with the other blow. But he got to get you in the world of worrying first. So when he come with the other blow, he can take you out. Do not let it happen. The second part of the body that worry aims for is the mind. Paul tells the church that peace comes and it comes to help the mind and comes to help the heart. The prophet Isaiah said something in Isaiah 51 verse 10. Read this with me. Well, well hold on just a minute. Put Philippians 2, 5 up there because I, I really want them to see what he says here. Uh, uh, I think we all know the scripture. The Bible says, be this mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in, in, in Christ Jesus. Now, I, I wouldn't study this out. And, and the, the type of mind that Jesus Christ had, I can assure you that it was not a mind that worried about anything. When they come to kill him, he wasn't worried. When they wanted to get him in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wasn't worried. I mean, I mean, when he had to go into the house to clean up the house and he threw everybody out, he wasn't worried. I mean, when they lied on him and all the things, he, he, he didn't worry at all. I mean, when, and he, I mean, I mean, he had a mind of peace. That's why he said, Father, when he prayed, he said, the peace that you've given me, he said, I give to them. He said, because they're going to need that peace to make it because there's things that's going to come up against them that's going to cause them to worry. Jesus said, be this mind in you that's in Christ Jesus. You got to get close to him. You got to you got to go through the scriptures and walk with him and see how he handled all those situations and see what frame of mind he had. It was a positive mind. It was a sure mind. He believed that everything was going to be all right. It, it, it was deep. It was deep. But I can assure you that he didn't worry at at all. The prophet, there's two scriptures that I want to leave, the, the Bible, that I want to seal in your soul, and I'm going to try to get you out of here. That's two. The prophet Isaiah, 4110. These scriptures I want to seal in your soul. One of my favorite scriptures. He says, the prophet. He said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Oh, God, thank you. He said, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. He said this, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's a promise to you. He said, I'm going to strengthen you, I'm going to help you, and I'm going to uphold you with my right hand. If you got all that on your side, why are you worried? I see, I hold him to that, bro. I keep him to that. I keep him to that. You said you'll keep me. You said you'll strengthen me. You said you'll help me in time. You'll help, a present help in time 
of trouble. You said all of that. And here's the other scripture. David said this in Psalms 52, verse 22. Somebody who always dealt with that spirit of worrying. But David rested on these Psalms and David rested in the word of God to keep that spirit back. It kept him safe and it got him back into his palace. Look at what he said here, 55, verse 22. He said, cast thy burdens upon the Lord. He's trying to teach you something. Whatever is what you're facing, whatever is burdening you down, whatever is troubling you, he said, don't you keep it. Give it to him. He said, cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and he shall, now here's the word that they miss, sustain thee. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I can stop there and preach that word right there. He, he, he shall sustain you. Matter of fact, let me help some of you out. Let me tell you what that means. That word sustain means he shall strengthen thee. He shall help thee. He shall comfort thee. He shall assist thee. He shall encourage thee. He shall, he shall, he shall. Whatever worry comes to do, he shall take care of it. He's the opposite of it. That's what he said. And the Bible said he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Ooh, that's the kind of God I serve, y'all. That's why I get excited about it. That's why I love him the way I love him. That's why I glory. That's why I go into a line being for him. That's why I do whatever he tells me to do. God Almighty, he's an awesome God. He is a magnificent God. Watch, watch, watch this. I, I got a little bit more time, don't I? I got a little bit more time. Listen, listen, watch, watch this. When worry enters in, this is what I got to get you to see. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Watch this. Now, stick with me, okay? I'm going to get you out of it. I hope I'm not boring you. Am I boring you today? It's okay to preach like this? Y'all can handle it? Watch. When worry enters in... Watch this. When worries enter in, it changes the climate. It does. I was sitting there in the truck with my wife. We were laughing and talking about something. We got the phone call. Worry came in and it changed the climate. In the, it changed the atmosphere, man. I, I, I mean, it, the atmosphere, it, it was peaceful. It was filled with joy. But then all of a sudden, it was, it was, just, it was just filled with trouble. I didn't want to say anything. She's sitting over here not talking to me. It changed. That. The whole atmosphere changed when somebody is worrying. You don't mind if I sit there for a minute. Maybe I'll calm down a little bit. <laughs> the second thing happens when worry enters in is this. It changes your demeanor. I looked at my wife's face, and she was so sad. I mean, let me tell you something. When, when, <laughs> well, well, let me just say this. Well, Y'all got me lying. Oh, okay, well, good, I can see it then. Boy, when I looked over at my wife and she was weeping and she was crying, I saw one of the ugliest faces that I ever want to see. <laughs> it scared me for me. It changes the demeanor on her face. I, I, she, I mean, she went in. She went in like, ooh. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get, but it was, it, her demeanor changed. Look at somebody who's worrying and watch how their demeanor, they don't look the same. That's how come you can tell if they're worrying. They don't look the same anymore. And I had to do something. I had to start pumping up. I had to start saying things to get her to change from an ugly face to a pretty face. <laughs> Lord help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> when, when worry enters in, it runs away faith. Runs it clean away. The Bible said without faith is impossible to please please God. You need to be careful with worry. Please don't let worry, worry come in. When, when worry come in, watch this, it makes you question what you have. You will question what you have. You will question the covenant that you have with God. You will question your relationship with God, whether it is real or even whether it's God real or not. When worry comes in, it will make you question what you got. I mean, I mean, what, what good does it do me to go down to that church? Is this really working? Is, is, is my walk with Christ really? Where is he who he really is? It starts making you question all this stuff. When worry comes in. And let me pause to say this here. When you tap off into that kind of world, and when you start doing those types of things, it can be offensive toward God and hurt God. Because of all people should know he's a good God. Of all people that should know he's able, it should be you. Of all people that should know he's who he say he is and he's yay and amen, it should be you because he's been so good to you. You question whether or not your walk with God is real or not. You tasted of the heavenly gifts. 
You operated in it. You know he's real. Don't you let worry deceive you and cause you to feel like that and think like what you got is real. The blood is real. The water baptism is real. The incident of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it is real. It's real. Yes, it's real. Now I got somebody on my side. It's time to fight now. It's time to tell worry to get up out of my house. It's time to tell worry to get out of my mind. It's time to tell worry to get out of my heart. It's time to tell worry to get away from my husband. Get away from my I wish I had somebody that would help me. Oh, good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell worry to get out of here. Jesus name make me question what I have he's been good to me how am I gonna question he found me about to commit suicide on the bridge and get ready to kill myself and he pushed me back and saved my life how am I gonna question him taking crack cocaine and alcohol out of my life how am I gonna question how he saved me gave me back my family that disowned me how am I gonna question that better go back and dust off your testimony Worry gonna cause me to question whether or not God has been good to me. When worry enters in, it makes you question your relationship. When worry enters in, it gives power to fear. I want you to listen. I want you to listen. I got about what two minutes? One minute? What did we say? Ten twenty? How much time I got? Talk to me. Ten thirty. All right. When worry enters in. Thank you. When worry enters in, it gives power to fear. I want you to listen to me real carefully. Because sometimes you probably don't know what. Listen to me. Listen to me. Worry works hand in hand with fear. I call them two roommates. Oh, let me, let me break it. Uh, how about this? I call them homeboys. Yeah. They're together. When, when, when worry comes, watch this, fear comes with it. You, you go from worrying to being afraid. Because watch this, Satan is not trying to tag you with just worrying. He has to have fear to mate with it so it can completely shut you down with faith. Worry by itself, still faith can operate a little bit. But worry with fear cripples. It cripples faith. And how can you do anything without faith? Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I, I think you see how, I think you see how, I think you see how important it is. Not to worry. It, it, it takes the scriptures being revealed to us to show us that the reason why things have not been have not been flowing like they should in our lives is because I allow worry and fear to take over. Worry and fear. He tried to get me with my own daughter. Worry and fear. He, he, he tried to get me with my own family. Worry and fear. I, I, I can't understand. I, my knees were, were shaking one time. I, I said, wait a minute. This is not of God. And fear came in my heart. Felt like I'm about to jump out of my chest. And it seemed like I'm about to lose my mind. I understand. But it's not the will of God. It's not the will of God. Now I'm crippled. And I can't even speak nothing toward heaven for heaven to do something for me because I'm all crippled. I'm arrested by, by worrying. By fear. Oh, I messed up. I can't function. I don't want to do anything. Just let me crawl in a hole somewhere. Let worry and fear consume me. I understand it. I'm, I'm sympathetic to it. Trust me. I've been there. It takes somebody to have been through it to understand what you're going through. It's a shame you come in this church Sunday after Sunday. You still got the same problems you worried about. You haven't changed. We're still praying for you at the altars about the same thing that you worried and troubled about 20 years ago. Watch this. 
this, watch this, watch this. God just spoke in my spirit, Pastor. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. What is what 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 fear and worry is covering, watch this, is the prophetic that God has placed in your life for you and somebody else. Your miracle is coming when you remove worry and when you remove fear. Come on, Holy Ghost, speak to somebody right now. When you get rid of the worry and you get rid of the fear, you're gonna see what God has for you. You ought to leave out of here telling the devil, devil, I'll never worry again. Devil, I'll never be afraid again. For if God can be with me, who can be against me? If God is for me, who? Hey, salam boy. Good God Almighty. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, right? Hold no more. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody step outside, worry. Come on, come on, come on. Pull up, pull up fear. Say, fear, get up, get off of me. Say, worry, get back, get back. I got to get what God has for me. I got to get what God has for me. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. That's it, brother. That's it. Go ahead, walk in it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Fear, worry, you beat me down for too long. I'm not worried about that promotion anymore in my job. I'm not worried about what's going to happen. I'm not worried about that mortgage anymore. I'm not worried about whether or not this or that's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Holy Ghost. Hey, hey. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's that fear. Oh, 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 ha, ha. yes, yes, yes. It gives power to fear. Glory to God. I wish I had some soft music. I ended up. I had some music. Where's a musician? Give me, give me. Is there a musician around here somewhere? Let, 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 let me in. I got five minutes here, and I'm, I'm going to end with this because I think you got the revelation of what I'm talking about. You see what that consecration has produced? It has given you knowledge and understanding about something that's far beyond your imagination. Your consecration was not in vain. That, that's some of you getting ready to go to another dimension. I, 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 I mean, I, I, I just felt it in the Holy Ghost. You can't let your children see you worrying. You can't let your children see you afraid. What good does it do me to serve your God if he leaves you in that condition? Why would I want to come to church and be who you are and be what you are when I see how you're broke down? Lift your hands up, sir. Don't you worry about a thing. God, give him courage, oh Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel his presence all over this place. That's it, mother. Don't you worry about a thing again. Don't you worry about a thing again. He said, I place the precious promises at your feet. Hey, Lamor, yes, Mahaya. Don't you worry about a thing. Ah, let's check Alamoha. Pick up your promise. Pick up your promise. I wish I had somebody to be like a shooter, my woman. You go back and get your promise. Don't you worry about that boy. He might be dead today, but he's gonna live tomorrow. Hey, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, don't you worry, don't you worry about a thing. My God is with you. My God is on your side. My God say he'll never leave you nor forsake you. My God say he shall sustain you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, don't you worry. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Don't you worry. Hallelujah. 